a program transcribed earlier from Mutual. Once again, the Mutual Broadcasting System brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Are you interested in engineering, electronics, ship design, travel, and a steady job? If you are a young man between the ages of 17 and 22, you may qualify for a four-year college education and a career of public service in the United States Coast Guard. This oldest branch of the seagoing services maintains an academy at New London, Connecticut for the professional training of its future officers. Applicants selected for the Coast Guard Academy by nationwide examinations begin their training each year late in July. Applications for this year's convening class must be postmarked not later than April 1st, and entrance examinations are held on May 8th. For complete information, write to the superintendent, U.S. Coast Guard Academy, New London, Connecticut, or visit your nearest Coast Guard recruiting station today. And now, the shadow. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret, the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Touch of Death. It is early afternoon. Lamont Cranston, in his dual role of the shadow, has just broken another case and is about to enter his apartment to get some much-needed rest. Oh, it'd be good to get these clothes off. Thirty-six hours without a change. Why do some people have to be criminals to get what they want? Oh, well, I'll let the philosophers figure that one out. Here for a quick shower and then... Good to afternoon, death. Mr. Cranston. Oh? How did you... We've been waiting patiently in your kitchen. Nice view of the river, I must say. How did you get in here? I hope you'll forgive us for having raided your icebox, but you were gone such a long time. Who are you? What do you want? I'm Lucius Hawks. This is my sister-in-law, Molly Hawks. Hawks? Yes. I see the name rings a bell in your memory. Why shouldn't it? He sent Peter to the electric chair just two weeks ago. My brother, Mr. Cranston. I was very fond of him. Your that. brother was a murderer, Mr. Hawks. Nobody would have known about my husband if it hadn't been for you. In the shadow. Molly, put that gun away. Why should I? Peter is dead. Put it away. I told you no violence. I don't like the sight of blood. He's got no right to live. Him first, and then the shadow. Molly, will you do as I say, or must I... No, no, don't come near me. I find you much too emotional at the wrong time. Don't touch me. I'll put the gun away. I'll listen to you. Well, that's better. We must remember to take good care of Mr. Cranston. We need him. What do you want? The shadow. What? <laughs> now you're being funny. I didn't laugh when I heard of my brother's death in the electric chair. I could have stopped it if I'd been here, Mr. Cranston, but I wasn't. I've spent nearly all the last ten years in the jungles of the Amazon, and it wasn't until I returned yesterday that I heard about my brother. It was quite a shock. How do you know the shadow had anything to do with it? Peter told me the last time I saw him, just before... If it hadn't been for your meddling, Cranston... Relax. Molly. But I... All right, Lucius. You're wasting your time. The shadow's invisible. No one can find him. I wonder. <laughs> you think I can do what the underworlds failed to do in years? I'm going to make it your responsibility, Mr. Cranston. Now, listen, Mr. Hawks. I'm tired. Without your detective work, the shadow might never have been given the lead to my brother. Well, what did you expect me to do? Let a professional killer go on killing? Cranston, would you like to die now? Molly likes to handle that gun, doesn't she? No, I'm afraid you don't understand. 
Look at these flowers. They're beautiful. Huh? Notice the delicate shading of the petals. The graceful stems. What did you do to them? I touched them. Poor things, they withered and died. I'm sorry, I hate to kill beautiful things. Is that your kitten, Mr. Cranston? Tommy, uh, come here, Tommy. Tommy must have been under the bed until now. Look at him stretch. Let me help you. No, leave him alone. Get back, Cranston. All I'm going to do is so throw him there. <coughs> Tommy! Why, you... Oh, my, I've done it again, Mr. Cranston. I touched him and Tommy is dead. You... You're angry, aren't you? You'd like to choke the life out of me, but you won't. Molly is very emotional and she might pull the trigger. Or have I convinced you that I have the touch of death? Get out of here. Yes. I'm glad you didn't force me to touch you, because I need you alive. Remember your assignment. I want the shadow, and I give you 12 hours to find him. Get out, get, get out! Keys, Mr. Cranston, put them on the table. Oh, Molly, our friend is very stubborn. Go behind him and take them out of his pocket. Do I have to get that close to him? Bear in mind, the gun is not to go off. It won't. Not because... Drop them into my hand. Thank you. A precaution, Mr. Cranston. I don't like to be followed. Your keys will be in the lock on the other side of the door. How do you expect him to find the shadow if he can't get out? Why, he'll get out, my dear. The telephone is still working. Goodbye, Mr. Cranston. The shadow in 12 hours or the touch of death. Here's a chance to use your skill as a detective to save your own life. <laughs> Lamont, I'm not convinced. He must know you're the shadow or he wouldn't have come here to ask you to find him. If he knows, Margot, why didn't he kill me? Yes. Why didn't he? It would have been very simple. Molly had a gun on me and Lucius had... Do you really believe he has the touch of death? Well, I don't know what he has. But I saw him touch those flowers and then Tommy. He's a poor Tommy. man can't be human to kill an innocent, harmless little kitten. Darling, you must do something. I'd do something. I'd do plenty if I knew where to find him. He knows where to find you. You can't just sit here and wait. Twelve hours. Ten hours, darling. Took me a long time to get you on the phone. Yes, I was out shopping, darn it. Well, I have to call off our theater date with Weston. Do you mind? Shall I phone him or will you? No, I'll do it. Uh, are you going to tell him why? I can't, Margot. Weston, I think as you did, that Lucius Hawks came here tonight because he thought that I was the shadow. Hello, Commissioner Weston talking. What do you want? Uh, this is Lamont Cranston, Commissioner. Oh, Cranston, I'm glad you called. Our date for tonight is off. Oh, good. I... Uh, what's good about it? An epidemic of murders has broken out all over the city. Murders? Yeah. Well, thanks for calling, Cranston. Give my best to Margot. Uh, uh, Commissioner... Goodbye. Hello. Hello? An epidemic of murders. What are you talking about, darling? Margot, we're going down to police headquarters to see Weston. I want to know more about those murders. Well, would you mind telling me what murders... Oh, not at all. After Weston has told me. Well, all right, but I... Come on, look at me. Close the door, quick. Darling, but... darling, since when are you afraid of dead reptiles? Oh. Oh, gee, is he, is he really dead? Completely. But still useful. Ooh. What? A piece of paper in his mouth. No. Well, I can think of nicer ways to leave messages, even if they aren't quite so novel. Ooh. Hmm. Lucius Hawks. Oh. Listen. Nothing can resist the touch of death, my friend, not even the venomous serpent. Good luck, Mr. Cranston, and good hunting. That man is a monster. Yes, a monster with a plan. And he thinks he's using the strategy of terror on me. Keep your eyes on the road, Molly, and on that car ahead. Letting Cranston live. I tell you, Lucius, he's not going to find the shadow for us. He's not even going to try. How it's... certain you are. You know why? It's because he's not afraid of you. He will be, when he knows as much about me as you do. He'd have gone for you if I didn't have the gun on him and he killed his kitten. Well, that would have been a pity. I'm sorry I didn't let him. I should have forced you to kill him. Molly, will you please understand, Mr. Cranston must be kept alive until I'm ready to make my own disposition. And it's your duty to see that he is. You're not to do anything foolish when my back is turned. But, Lucius, I promised Peter before That's he died. It's not important. 
Peter was my husband. And he was my brother. Now do as I say. Yes, Lucius. You play chess, Molly. Chess? You should learn. You see the value of planning ahead. Look where Mr. Cranston stopped his car. Why, oh, Lucius. Right outside police headquarters. Yes, my strategy is beginning to work. Mr. Cranston will lead me to the shadow in spite of himself. <laughs> Nobody's going home. I'm putting every man on 24-hour duty. See that the order goes out right away. I want that maniac picked up today. What maniac, Commissioner? Oh, Cranston, you and Miss Lane picked a bad time to make a social call. I'm up to my ears and work. Oh, Commissioner, hello is such a small word. Margot. What maniac, Commissioner? Roy Jackson, he broke out of the institution yesterday. Jackson? Three murders in the last two hours, and the same pattern he used six years ago before the Shadow caught him for it. You mean girls? Blonde, beautiful, and all under 25. If I could only get my hands on the shadow. Why the shadow? Well, I need him. Roy Jackson's got the cunning of every homicidal maniac. And I've got to stop these killings. The commissioner. What is it? How were those girls killed? I said Roy Jackson, Cranston. That can mean only one thing. They were strangled. Are those girls at the morgue? Cranston, sometimes you ask No, I'd, I'd like to see them. Would you mind? No, I don't mind. But don't stick your two cents in. I don't want any amateurs... Cluttering up this case. I'll bear that in mind, Commissioner. Now, let's go, darling. Goodbye, Commissioner. Sometimes that's so much nicer than saying hello. Yes. Nah. Uh, hey, what did you mean by that? Mm, what a mood. Oh, no, he doesn't mean it. Next time he sees us, he'll be apologizing all over the place. Well, he certainly should be. Lamont, why are we going to the morgue? Playing a hunch, darling. Is it a secret? No. I want to see if there's any evidence on those girls that might have been concealed by strangling. What? I don't understand. Well, simply this. Were those girls killed by Jackson or by someone else? I'm coming, I'm coming. What are you folks trying to do? Wake the dead? Hello, McCab. Oh, Mr. Cranston. Come in, come in. Thanks. Is this lady with you? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm leaving with him, too. Huh? Oh, Miss Lane, I didn't recognize you behind them green blinkers. Okay, I'll take them off. Well, what can I show you today? Uh, those three girls were strangled. Yeah, sure, over this way. Commissioner's sure making a fuss over them gals, Mr. Cranston. Been here twice since they got brung in. Checking and rechecking like there was some mystery. Well, he wanted to make sure that... He uh... did. Second time he come, he says, Roy Jackson done it. Then he walks out of here madder and... Oh, excuse me, Miss Lane. I got evil thoughts. Huh? Now, here's the first one. Margo? I'm all right, Lamont. Now, here's the second one. And here's number three. I don't know what you're looking for, Mr. Cranston, but you ain't going to find it. Well, maybe I won't, Miss Cab. The coroner says they got strangled. That's a fact, Miss Lane. Yes, yes, I guess so. Official verdict. Huh? Hey, Miss Lane, you're crying? Well, it... It just makes me so furious. It's so awful. Well, Only a maniac could have done this to them. Well, that's what Commissioner Weston says. But I... I'll bet you a ghost that's him now, coming back for another look. I better go let him in. Well, Lamont? Oh, nothing so far. Everything points to Jackson, his pattern. Rope around the neck from behind. The victim doesn't have a chance. Shall we go now? No, oh, just a minute. But, uh, what are you looking to risk for? I'm still playing my hunch. I hope that hunch is wrong, darling. Uh, What's that? Oh, it's McCab. McCab! What's the matter? Come on, look, he's on the floor. McCab! McCab! Oh, darling, look how he's clutching in his heart. Uh, I'll, I'll phone for it. Yes, quick. Uh, Margo. Better phone for the coroner. What? Oh, Lamont. Yes, darling. Poor McCabe. Heart failure. And we couldn't do a thing to help him. This may have been another warning, Margot. What? Not at all sure that McCabe's heart failure might not have been induced by 
Murder. During the war, 85 million Americans bought war bonds. Today, those same Americans are not only holding on to their war bonds, but are buying United States savings bonds. These bonds are identical except for name to the war bonds you purchased during the war years. There were many good reasons for buying bonds during the war. We had to have the planes and the tanks and the equipment. With Victory, your Victory bonds help bring the boys home, help to provide needed hospitalization and care for the wounded. And yet while your war bonds and Victory bonds were doing all that, they were working for you, providing a bulwark for your own future. United States savings bonds can do that same job. They give you the opportunity to lay aside a financial nest egg for yourself. They make it possible for you to save the money that will buy you a home, that will pay for education for your children, that may be the means to start out in business. Whatever your objective, U.S. savings bonds can help to make those dreams come true. You can buy U.S. savings bonds through the payroll savings plan or at any bank or post office. For your own future, buy them and hold them. And now... Back to the shadow. It is several hours later, and in Lamont Cranston's apartment, Cranston and Margot Lane are listening while Commissioner Weston gloats. <laughs> I take back everything I said about the shadow of the blue shot. He doesn't hold a candle to the policeman, and never will. Oh, Commissioner, he's done some good, you know. Mm, here and there, but who captured Roy Jackson, eh? My boy. Caught him flat on his back to sleep in a barn. Are you satisfied that uh, he strangled those girls? Aren't you, Cranston? Jackson denied it. So what? Well, he didn't deny the murders he committed six years ago. What's that got to do with now? Well, it breaks the pattern. <laughs> Cranston, you ought to read a book on criminology. I have, Commissioner. And on page one, it says, don't believe everything you see. Are you leading into the subject of macabre again? I'm in it, Commissioner. Now, look. You kids are not going to tie me up for the night. The coroner says McCab had a heart attack. That makes it official. Well, couldn't he have been wrong? No, he couldn't. He checked that poor old guy from head to foot. There wasn't a mark on him to prove your suspicion of murder. But, Commissioner, I told you, McCab got an insurance policy on his life only a month ago. He was examined by a doctor and found to be okay. Well, what does that prove? A lot of things can change in a month. Look, Cranston, it's getting late and I've got a big day ahead of me. And I've had enough murder for the time being. Good night. Good night, Commissioner. He's a hard man to convince, isn't he? Yes. Why didn't you tell him about Lucius Hawks? Well, I couldn't, darling. I don't know enough about him myself. But you're sure he killed McCab? Not only McCab, darling. I'm sure he killed those girls. Well, why then? He wants the shadow. And Margot, he'll keep killing until he gets the shadow. Oh. Excuse me. Of course. Hello? Hello, Mr. Cranston. Lucius. Well, my friend, have you good news to report? Not yet. Oh, what a pity. Your time is nearly up, you know. I'll need more, Lucius. More time, but I gave you 12 hours. I'm sorry, I'm not a miracle man. And I thought you were. How we misjudge people. Well, have you at least a lead? I... I don't know. I might have. Would you like to tell me about it? I can't. You will. Come to my apartment, 972 Park Drive. And come alone. Very well, I'll be there in half an hour. Margot, this is the break I've been waiting for. Come on, darling, I'll take you home. Lamont, you are not going there alone. Well, of course. But suppose it's a trap. If he as much as suspects that you're the shadow here... Don't he... worry, darling, he won't kill me. Well, I'm going with you. Now, Margot. Don't try to talk me out of it, Lamont, because you can't get rid of me. All right. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. He's coming, my dear. Here's your sandwich. Thank you, Molly. Did you say you wanted coffee or milk? I didn't say, but milk, of course, warm. Oh, heat some up. No, wait. Uh, don't hurry. I can do that myself later. Oh, I don't mind. Molly, it's too bad that I won't be here to greet Mr. Cranston. Why, are you going away? Yes, I must. But you'll stay, won't you? Sure. Of course you will. Lucy, what are you doing? I'm going to kill you, my dear. No. I can't tell you how sorry I am, but it's part of my plan. But why? Why? Conclusive proof of the touch of death. It should convince Mr. Cranston that I mean business. No. No, don't let me, please. Let me live. Don't please. run away, Molly. There's no pain in death. Please. Please. 
Please, I don't want to die. Who does? But it comes to all of us sooner or later. No, no, no. And to you, it must come sooner. You've no place to go now, Molly. You're in a corner. Goodbye, my dear. (laughs) Poor Molly. Just a line in a blueprint. He's not going to open it, Lamont. Then I will. No, no, please don't go in there. Okay, what's the matter? Can't you see it's a trap, dear? He didn't answer the buzzer. He left the door unlocked for you to open, and he's waiting somewhere in there to kill you. Let's not keep him waiting. But... Just a minute, Mom. Why did you stop? Oh. Molly. Is she dead? I know in a minute. Oh. Yeah, she's dead. The touch of death? Maybe. No mark on her. Oh, Lamont. It's your down, doesn't it? Why, Molly, his sister-in-law, his, his own brother's wife. Well, I don't know, but I've got to find... Well, wait a minute, look at this. What? On her wrist, a tiny mark. I don't see anything. The crease. Did you see it now? Well, nothing that looks like a mark to me. No, look closely, right here. No, no, but I see something else, Lamont. What? A note on that typewriter on the table. It leaves in messages, doesn't it? What does it say? It says... One by one, the evidence mounts. You next, Mr. Cranston. If the shadow isn't in your apartment before morning. Don't keep me waiting. Lamont, he knows. We'll soon find out. Well, what are you going to do? Nothing. The shadow is not going to keep Lucius waiting. Thank you. A compliment from one so high. It's too bad you can't keep those hands from killing. Yes, you see, they're not as sentimental as I am. Shadow, you impress me. Do I? Yes, you're all my sister-in-law and Mr. Cranston said you are. Invisible. I didn't quite believe it, you know. Being secluded in the jungles of the Amazon for ten years, one loses touch with modern science. But not with death. Listen, this is a native death chant that I've written into a symphony. Why did you kill those three girls? There was no other way to meet you. And the cop? Your sister-in-law? Ah, then Mr. Cranston has told you everything? (laughs) The shadow doesn't have to be told. The shadow knows. The shadow and Mr. Cranston, where does one begin and the other end? I wonder. I can tell you what your end will be, Lucius. Mere assumption. Sit down, my friend, and make yourself visible. We can talk more affably, perhaps even reach an understanding. Shadow doesn't sit with murderers. Well, then perhaps Mr. Cranston will sit down with me. Mr. Cranston? Yes. You see, I know who you are. I suspected it from the beginning, but I needed the proof to convince myself. (laughs) You're bluffing, Lucius. Am I? Well, look at the marks that your shoes are leaving on the rug. Huh? With each step, you leave the mark of Lamont Cranston. Am I bluffing now? It won't help you, Lucius. Oh, Shadow, you're not as clever as I thought you might be. I outsmarted you. I phoned Lamont Cranston to come to my apartment. And then I killed Molly. That was a trap that I had set for you. And you walked right into it. Into the paraffin that I had smeared around Molly's body. And now the shadow has brought it here. So what am I to think? Well, what about it? Well, that's a sensible question. Your power to make yourself invisible. My power to kill with a touch. Combine them and we can have anything we want. As equal partners? Of course. Oh, no. I want more. Oh, greedy, aren't you? Very well, how much? I want everything. What? 
You serious? <laughs> when I bargain with murderers, I have no sense of humor, Lucius. Get on that phone. Call the police. Tell them everything you did today. But if I should also tell them who the shadow is... Go ahead. Every newspaper in the city will carry the story. What do you suppose the underworld would do to Lamont Cranston then? He'll take his chances with the underworld, Lucius. A phone? Well, I'm afraid you give me no alternative. I'll have to kill you. Don't try to get away. I know exactly where you are. Your shoe prints tell me. You're... You're behind the table. Where, Lucius? Well, you're... You're... You're still behind the table. Am I? You must be. (laughs) I'll find you. I'll find you that paraffin on your shoes. And when I do... (laughs) What will you do, Lucius? My arm! My arm! Why don't you touch me? Oh! I'm right here behind you, holding your wrist. Why don't you kill me? I can't stand it. Let me go. Didn't you know that paraffin could be wiped off? (laughs) You didn't think of that, did you? Shadow, please, I won't betray you. Let me go. In a moment. First, I'll rip off this glove. Now I've got your touch of death. Oh, you almost broke my arm. Very ingenious to find a glove that fits over the hand and looks exactly like a human hand. And under each nail, a fine needle with poison on it. The case against you is complete, Lucius. Is it? Oh, no, Shadow, because I still have the other glove. Stop it, Lucius. Not now, Shadow. Stop it. (laughs) So, Lucius, the last victim of the touch of death. It's too bad you didn't think of your own death before you killed others. Well, good night, darling. Better get home, get some of that sleep as long as you may. wait just one minute. I'm still nervous about how close the shadow came to being revealed. Do you know that your life wouldn't have been worth a pin cushion? I know, darling. It was the closest call the shadow ever had. Yes, but there's one thing I don't understand. Hmm? How could the coroner have said that McCab died of heart failure when actually he was poisoned? Well, Margaret, there's some poisons that are so deadly and so mysterious their presence in the blood can't be detected. Natives to the Amazon jungles produce such a poison. Oh, I see. Well, I'm glad you can because I can't. Probably. What do you mean? Oh, darling, I'm so sleepy that you and the street all around you are almost invisible. Oh. Millions of people are still buying bonds through the payroll savings plan. The payroll savings plan is being continued by your government at the request of both labor and management. Here is the easy way to save, to provide that substantial nest egg for the future, and to make money at the same time. For U.S. savings bonds, pay $4 at maturity 10 years from now for every $3 invested today. Enroll on the payroll savings plan and start saving so that you can own your own home or provide a college education for your children or have the means to go into business someday. And if you don't work in a plant where the payroll savings plan is in effect, Make it a weekly habit to visit your bank or post office. You can always buy U.S. savings bonds at either place. Buy them and hold them for your own future. And now The Shadow again. The Shadow program is based on a story copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, The Shadow will demonstrate that Weed of crime, there's bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, Mutual Don Lee will bring you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadows' daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. This program was transcribed earlier from Mutual's Eastern Network for presentation to our West Coast listeners. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.